Hey everyone, a lot of players ask the same question. I'm stuck in gold, plat, silver, etc. How do I climb? This question is impossible to answer because everyone has different things they're good or bad at. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the top 5 mid lane mistakes that any elo diamond or below make. Diamond is included because most players here lack a lot of basic game knowledge and they can also learn from this video. Before we get into it, you should know we create way more guides just like this one on our website skillcap.com. Check it out so you can improve way faster with our weekly system. Let's get right into it with our first mistake, which is not optimizing your recalls. A lot of players struggle knowing when they should recall and what to do with the minion wave before they do, so let's take a look at some examples from low elo games. This first one is from Diamond, where they are playing Camille vs Kassadin. This matchup is heavily favored for Camille, and this Camille does a good job of abusing the matchup advantage, pressuring Kassadin really hard in the first few levels. Then as Kastin gets low, Camille jumps in and flashes to finish him off. This was all great, but how does she optimize her recall here? Let's see what she does. She ends up pushing the wave and Kastin comes back to collect the cannon wave. This could be a lot better and here's how. Let's go back to after she killed Kassadin. If we look at the minion wave, it is pushing towards Camille, so if she recalls right now, the blue wave will kill these red minions. By the time it's done with that, the next red wave will be here as well so we'll start killing those minions too. This would deny Kassadin a lot more CS and put Camille further ahead. Also, this would sync the Camille and Kassadin's back timings together, so when they both get back to lane, the wave is close to Camille's tower, set up perfectly for a gank on the no flash Kassadin, or for another all in. So, how do you know when to do this? It's pretty simple. If you can't push the wave fast enough to crash it on the tower before the next wave gets there, it's normally better to let it push to you while you recall. Now, let's take a look at another example of an unoptimized recall. In this clip, we have a Platinum Cassiopeia. She gets a gang from her jungler, which ends up chunking the Velkaz. Then she tries to kill him, but can't really catch him with his long range. Now Velkaz is recalling, and Cassio clears the first wave, and starts working on the cannon. And when she's done with the cannon wave, look at the state of the two waves now. She didn't crash the cannon wave, meaning she's going to miss all six of those minions that just got there. This is a big deal early on as every single minion wave matters so you don't fall behind in experience. Also, if the Velkos was good, he would make Cassio lose more than just these 6 because he would thin the wave out and freeze it. This is one of the worst situations as a mid laner. In high elo, you see players die all the time trying to make sure the wave crashes to avoid this kind of situation. So what should she have done? If you learn from the last one, she should have recalled with the wave pushing to her, but with one extra step this time. If we go back to right here, Right when Velka started recalling, Cassio should kill a few minions, then start her recall. This is a lot of minions and sometimes if the wave is too big, it'll crash on your tower while you're on your way back to lane, which is what you don't want. You want the wave to be frozen when you get back. Once she has these 3 minions left, that's a perfect time to recall. Alright, let's move on to the next big mistake. This one is trying too hard to kill the enemy laner. A lot of players tunnel vision really hard on getting solo kills, and it can backfire if you get ganked or if you take a greedy tower shot especially if you're ahead. If you look at this clip of the Diamond Camille again, she's currently way ahead of the Kassadin sitting at 3-0. She jumps in here, misses her E, then tries to trade with Kassadin, but loses the trade. Then on the next wave, she tries to do it again, missing E just like before, and then tries to alt Kassadin and kill him. Kassadin barely wins the 1v1 and gets 600 gold for it, putting him right back in the game. This is a big deal of course, but what should Camille be doing? So she has a TM mat, meaning she can clear the wave easily, and Kastin can't stop her because he shouldn't be able to trade with her unless she opens with E like she keeps doing, because then he just alts away. So she should just be walking up to the wave with the purpose of clearing it and roaming, and if Kastin uses R for whatever reason, she can punish using her E. The main thing to understand is that once you win your lane hard, you want to look to push your lead around the map if possible. Let's look at another example from the Platinum Cassiopeia. She's two levels ahead of Velkaz right now and catches him walking over two wards, heading to mid lane. She chases and then flashes on him in mid, then continues to chase all the way into her own jungle where he combos her and shuts her down getting 600 gold. So you have to understand what each champion is good at and their weaknesses, then use that to push your lead further. So for this matchup, it's Cassio vs Velkaz. Velkaz outranges the Cassio, so it's hard for her to solo kill him, which is probably what tempted this Cassio to flash in like she did. But Velkaz is really bad if you get near him, which makes it hard to roam, especially when behind without vision. So Cassio should be focusing on clearing the wave and looking for roams and vision, 
then try to catch Velkoz if he makes the mistake of roaming. A perfect example would be at the very start of this. Cassio has vision of Velkoz coming through the brush here, so this is when she should be turning the corner and looking to kill him. Alright, the next big one is trying too hard to roam. We hear the same thing all the time, I win lane and try to roam to my other lanes to stop them from feeding, but it doesn't work. Well the first thing you have to understand is why you're roaming in the first place. You roam to push your own lead further, or push other leads around the map further. You never roam to help your team as it sets you up to die as well. This sounds crazy, but let me explain. Let's say you're fed Cassidy and your Jack's top is getting crushed by Riven, and is spam pinging for help. The jungler is ignoring him, so you think you should go gank for him. First, you might just get 2v1, but more importantly, if the enemy jungler is around and you fight 2v2, you're gonna lose because your Jax is getting crushed and will be useless in that fight. And if you give shutdown gold to a laner that is already fed, the game's over. Now that you know why you're roaming, let's look at an example of a bad roam. If we look at this Camille and Diamond, she TPs bot lane and dives the enemy bot, killing Draven. Then Riven TPs in and Kasten roams down, getting another kill. There are two main issues with roams like these. One, it's really forced as diving is always dangerous and the enemy bot wasn't that low to start with. But the main reason is that the Camille is trying to make a play with her jungler on the other side of the map. When roaming, you want to be looking to make plays on the same side as your jungler, unless it's something really free and not risky. Making plays without your jungler creates situations like these where you get outnumbered and throw even more gold to the Kassadin. Alright, the next one is not respecting mid-game map rotations. This means when first towers start to fall, dying to enemy roams. You need to understand that after the enemy top or bot takes their first tower, they'll be looking to roam and push their lead afterwards. This sounds obvious to all of you, but if that was the case, you wouldn't die to such obvious roams all the time. Like in this clip of a Lux and Gold, the enemy bot laner takes the tier 1 tower, then look where they go on the minimap. They walk over wards going into the jungle. They are pinged by Lux's team, so she should know they are coming but she doesn't back away and gets killed from the roam. And in this clip of the Platinum Cassiopeia, the enemy bot lane lost their tier 1 tower, so Thresh roamed to mid. Then Thresh leaves to help his team in the river. Cass stays in mid, and even with Karma moving on a bunch of wards, Cass gets caught by the Karma and killed because she didn't back off. When the tier 1 towers start to fall, you have to be very respectful of these roams and pay attention where the enemy support is. If the enemy support is MIA, play safer until you see them again. It's okay to give up CS so you don't die. Alright, the last big mistake is fighting without thinking. This one is probably the biggest and most common, especially when it comes to your own jungler. A lot of players will help their jungler whenever they ping, before even thinking about if the fight is a good idea to take or not. For example, in the game with the Platinum Cassiopeia, her Twitch jungle dies to a Mumu in the river, and the Renekton is close to death too. She starts heading over though, trying to help the fight even though the fight is already lost. Luckily, the enemy team trolls really hard here, so they turn this around, but this was because of how hard they misplayed. The decision to move over and help a losing fight is wrong and can easily be a big throw in another game. You have to make sure you're thinking about a fight before taking it. If you look at another example here from the Lux and Gold, her and Sona start walking over to help their Rengar in the jungle, but gets cut off by the enemy Lulu and Akali. Sona uses her ult and misses and they back off. Then the Rengar jumps in to fight so Lux starts heading over to help him. The problem is, they have no vision of some of the other members, and they don't have Riven here or Sona ult. So when they chase too far with no vision, the enemy Katarina jumps in and kills Rengar, and the whole team follows up and everyone dies. This is why it's important to think about if you should be taking a fight. Where are the other members? Do we have ultimates? All of this information is important. Lux should be back pinging her team and playing safe here, not going in to die with them. Alright guys, those are the top 5 mid lane mistakes in any rank, diamond, and below. We hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.